Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes around the world. Welcome to my channel. You're welcome to like, subscribe and share as you see fit. And for my existing subscribers, thank you as usual for your comments. Today's video is about how young should um, women be in particular? Well, not even women, children. Um, let me go back a bit. Um, I've got a video where the children look about five, five or six, and they're really going at it in a, in a ring. And um, it's a girl against a boy. And all I can say is that from the Western eye, it seems like it's brutal. It seems like it's um, inappropriate. But, you know, I'm thinking as a female, if I had been taught to defend myself as a child, I wouldn't have grown up so fearful. You know, because we always um, rely on men to protect us. And a lot of women, that's why they're sexually abused and assaulted. And especially in India, they've set up an actual school to defend women from rape and sexual assault. And likewise, in, um, in the Orient... They have set up schools so that they can train their children to be champions as young as five. And they go through some excruciating pain in order to strengthen them. I'm not saying that we should all go through pain, but I think if we as young girls in particular, we had been taught to fight and to defend ourselves, there's, there wouldn't be many of us who'd been abused or assaulted or raped and stuff like that. At the moment, you know, the women are, st they, you know, the far as when men are talking about gender issues, they always say, oh, well, the man is stronger. So that's why I'm going to show you this video. And it is going to be quite contra controversial. I hope you don't find it too disturbing. Um, it does involve five year old children, but it's not anything that I think is inappropriate. It's, you know, I'm going to show you enough to sell a point. Yeah, in the American um, Pediatric Society, they believe that boxing can give um, head injury. So that, you know, that kind of boxing, I don't think boxing is good anyway. But I'm thinking from the um, point of view of self-defense, what do you think about that? What, how young do you think children should be before they're allowed to be put in that position where they're fighting each other? In a, in a boxing ring, it looks like. Anyway, I wrote down some notes. Um, first, is it wrong for boys and girls to fight in a controlled environment? Young Oriental children are becoming more involved in harder martial arts, such as Thai boxing, blended with the martial arts. It's a trend in Thailand where I understand children aged between five and nine years old take part in Thai boxing and start professional fights at around 12 to 14 years old. Nanning Gymnasium in Nanning in China is one of the, of one of the many ruthless training camps across the country to which parents send their children to learn how to be champions. Um, they also have a training where men, grown men, stand on little girls' legs in order to strengthen their legs. And they have, um, I'm going to put the links below, and they have where boys hang from wooden frames to strengthen their arms. I mean, it doesn't seem to do them any harm. I mean, I don't know how they gauge. I don't know if they go to go through any medical, tra you know, medical assessment before they send them to these schools, because not everybody has the same um, stability, the same strength, the same kind of bone density. So I'm not quite sure how that's managed. But um, while tra training techniques appear extreme to the Western eye, they provide an insight into why China's athletes 
at London 2012 seem so easily able to swim, dive, lift and shoot their way to victory. All, yeah, so um, gymnasium stars are known for starting at an incredibly early age in China. Um, common beliefs with regard to self-defense outside the Western world are often largely based on perceptions obtained through the media and entertainment, especially when it involves children. On the one side, martial arts involved, involvement is believed to provide positive learning opportunities, and on the other side, it is viewed as antisocial. The Medical Academy of Pediatrics have tried to ban boxing for young people under 16 because of the infliction of pain that could cause brain damage on an opponent. However, different is this type of training. How different is this type of training? Martial arts, e.g. judo, karate, taekwondo, kickboxing. It has a universal appeal. Apparently in France, the Netherlands, Canada, Finland, Australia and Belgium, mar martial arts are on the list of the 10 most practiced sports among children and adolescents. That's according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, 2009. There's a therapeutic value in the martial arts, concentration, focus, and you need to have a calm disposition. Um, influence of martial arts practice on a variety of personal traits. Yeah, what type, what is the frame of mind of the person in training? Are they anger? Are they, are they resentful? What kind of issues do they have? That's when you have to kind of think when training becomes dangerous. Um, how safe do children feel? when they know how they can defend themselves, I'm sure it must give them a sense of self-confidence if you know you can defend yourself. I know that if I thought a bloke was coming behind me and I could cuff him one, I'd, I'd, I'd be confident. I'd be totally different. So I reckon it does have its merits. Uh, New Delhi girls are taking charge of their safety. This is in India to prevent themselves from sexual assault. Delhi is said to be not safe for females. Many are attacked daily in their own neighbourhoods after an 8-year-old girl and a 23-year-old woman were kidnapped, raped and brutally attacked. They are being taught self-defence. A free 10-day course is hosted by the New Delhi Police. A combination of karate, taekwondo and judo moves has been practised for the past eight years in the city's public schools and university. I think that would be good for the UK. I think they should do that and it should be free. I think self-defence should be a free service. Since a 23-year-old woman, Jayoti Pandi Singh, was beaten, gang-raped and fatally injured while riding a bus in the capital in 2012, women have been on edge. That attack prompted intense soul-searching and a fierce public debate about an issue that, though long pervasive, was seldom addressed. It also gave many women the courage to come forward and demand justice in such assaults rather than suffer in silence, too ashamed to speak up. At the NSKV school, Constable Renu led about 180 girls aged between 11 and 17 through possible scenarios of men grabbing them from behind as they walked down the street, striking a blow to their heads or lungs or their necks. In each case, the girls responded with the moves they had been taught to deflect such attacks, grunting, kicking and punching in unison. Asian girls tend to be reserved, making it hard for them to make the ruckus needed to alert others that they are in distress. To be able to make a sound is empowering in itself, she said. At this time, girls aren't safe, she said. Men treat us like we're not human. But she added, a with a clenched fist grinding in the palm of her open hand, this gives me confidence. So although controversial, teaching girls to be as strong as men could be positive. Well, that's my little two pence worth. Yeah, so your comments would be appreciated.